Syria's civil war rages on, and so far the U.S. and the international community have been unable to stop the violence or negotiate an end to the conflict. Is peace possible in the near term, and what will it take to get there? Recently retired ambassador to Syria, Robert Ford, visited the Wilson Center to share his perspective on the crisis and what the future might hold. That's the focus of this edition of Rewind. As the New York Times reported, 42 percent of all Syrians, 42 percent of all Syrians, more than the population of New York City, have fled their homes. In the U.S., this is equivalent to 131 million Americans on the move. So who better to help us understand what lies ahead than the brave former U.S. ambassador to Syria, Robert Ford, who just stepped down from his post last month. We are honored uh, that this is his first major policy address since leaving office. Tell us why. What, what is the key to Assad's longevity so far? Why has he been able to sustain himself? Um, first and foremost, the opposition that we were just talking about has been very unsuccessful at explaining an agenda that would not threaten pillar the, the communities that are the pillars of support for the regime. The opposition has not distinguished itself clearly from the most extreme elements, and it really scares not only Alawis, but Christians, uh, the Druze, a lot of the Sunni business class. Um, so there's manpower coming in from Hezbollah, from Iraqis, um, Iranian and Russian financing, and huge amounts of arms coming from both Russia and Iran. Uh, the state is, the Syrian state under Assad is decaying, it is degrading in the war of attrition. But so far, the regime has a certain unity lacking on the opposition. Is there really potential cooperation, do you think, between the United States and Iran when it comes to Syria? Um, I don't know if we're going to be able ever with the Iranians to agree on a sort of a way forward. I think we do share at a minimum, a counter-terrorism mm -hmm. interest. Is ending Syria's civil war and the reconstitution of a unified, coherent Syrian polity a, a vital, and I choose my words very carefully here, a vital national interest for the United States? So I think if I can cut to the chase here, and what you're really asking is, should we be applying military force? That's right. And so let's... That's what I'm really asking. One of the great things about retiring is I can cut to the chase. So <laughs> ultimately, the solution is not going to be airstrikes against an Assad airfield, as satisfying as that might be. The solution is not going to be drone strikes against regime convoys trundling up to Aleppo. It's going to be a political settlement between elements of the regime and the opposition. The military action is a tool in a tool kit, but it is not the, the solution by and of itself. I, I'm speaking very frankly with this group here. We don't do our Syrian friends a favor if we encourage them to think that, oh, if we could just convince the administration to do a military strike, then the problem is solved because it absolves them of doing the hard work of reaching out and undermining Assad's support politically within his own regime. And so the sooner this conflict is resolved politically, uh, the easier it's going to be to maintain that territorial unity. In the end, uh, we had to have a political deal at Taif. And uh, I'm not saying that's the way to solve the Syrian crisis, but Again, the focus on politics uh, as the way to resolve the issue. For more information, visit wilsoncenter.org. Click the Programs tab to find additional resources from the Wilson Center's Middle East program.